Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to download Sentinel-2 satellite imagery ready for analysis in QGIS 3. Um, so Sentinel-2 is a great source of satellite imagery, it's a European Space Agency satellite and the data is freely available and it's particularly good for agricultural and ecological um, applications as well as a whole range of other things because it's pretty high resolution for free satellite imagery um, and it has particularly good coverage of the red, red edge and near infrared parts of the, the EM spectrum. So the way that we're going to do this in QGIS is we're actually going to make use of the download tool within the semi-automatic classification plugin. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure we've got the semi-automatic classification plugin installed. So if you go to the plugin manager and start, start typing, um, you should see the semi-automatic classification plugin here. Now I've already got it installed, so you'll need to hit the install button, but I'm just going to tick here to turn the plugin on. And when you first install the semi-automatic classification plugin, you should see a whole bunch of menus appear. It's one of the um, more comprehensive plugins that's available to us within QGIS. So it's a really fat, powerful tool for all kinds of um, image analysis tasks, image classification. But today we're just going to focus on the, the built-in tools it has for downloading imagery. So if you click on the, the button up here, um, then that will open up the main semi-automatic classification plugin window. So the only tool that we're going to worry about um, is the download products tool. Um, I will probably do some videos in the future covering the rest of this. So the plugin actually has the ability to download a whole range of different types of satellite data. We're just going to focus on Sentinel-2 for now. So the Sentinel-2 imagery is completely free to download and use, um, but we do need a login in order to actually access the data. So now we've got the plugin installed, the next thing we need to do is to go to this website here, scihub.copernicus.eu forward slash dhus. And then you can click at the top here um, and click sign up to register for an account. So it's pretty straight, straightforward, standard registration procedure. And once you've completed that, we can go back to the semi-automatic classification plugin and you can enter your username and password in the, the appropriate fields here. So once they're in, then we're ready to start searching for satellite imagery. So we can either enter coordinates for the area that we want to focus on, or we can select it directly from the map. So if you click on the set area and map button here, it doesn't jump you automatically to the map for some reason. Um, and it's not a click and drag tool. We actually need to left click at one corner of the area that we want um, and then right click at the other corner. So not the most obvious method for selecting an area. Once the area is selected, go back to the tool and you should see now that the coordinates of our area have been automatically filled in up here. The next thing to do is to select a date range. So the first Sentinel-2 satellite was actually launched back in June 2015, so that's as far back as, as we can go. Um, so I'm actually going to set this to look from the 1st of January 2018 to the 1st of January 2019. There we go, 1st of January 2018 to 1st of January 2019. So the next thing that we want to do is actually set a filter for cloud cover. So like pretty much all optical satellites, um, cloud is a major issue for Sentinel and obviously we don't want areas, um, images, sorry, that are showing us nothing but cloud cover. So I'm going to put this down to a 10% threshold. So it will only show me images that have less than 10% cloud cover for the area that I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to increase the number of results I can get slightly to 50 and I'm going to hit find. Now this does take a few seconds so we'll just need to be patient while that searches. Okay so we can see the results of our search in our product list down the bottom here. Um, so Sentinel-2 product ID acquisition date. Um, 
So we can see we've actually got quite a number of images spread through 2018, um, the percentage cloud cover that we've got. Now, one thing you might notice is that actually we have two different values on our product IDs here, um, L2A and L1C. So these are basically two of the different processing levels for the Sentinel-2 imagery. So L1C or level 1C is what's known as top of atmosphere reflectance. So the images have been tiled into 100 kilometer squares. Um, an elevation model has been used to correct them um, to ensure they're cartographically projected. But what the L1C is showing us is basically the, the kind of reflectance received at the top of the atmosphere. So the L2A product is the next step. Um, and that's actually been corrected for atmospheric distortion. So this is what's known as bottom of atmosphere reflectance. So for most purposes, unless you specifically know you need something different, the chances are that the L2A product is going to be what you want to look at. Um, and actually, we can narrow it down to search for just L2A results by simply typing L2A into the filter field at the top there. Um, so it doesn't need any kind of wildcard characters. We don't need asterisks or anything like that. Literally just put L2A into the filter box. Now, if we search again now, it will add those results to the list we've already got. So what I'm going to do is just click here to reset the results table. And then I'm going to search again to get just L2A products. OK, and now that's finished searching. We can see we've got a list here just the L2A products covering our area of interest um, within 2018. And we can see that they're pretty fre frequent. Um, so the Sentinel-2 constellation is actually made up of two different satellites. And in theory, we have coverage about every five days. Now, obviously, a lot of those images may include cloud cover. So that's cutting down the, the number of results we have here. So now we've got our results. Which ones do we want to download? So if we click on any of them, we'll get a small preview in this window over on the right hand side here. So we can get a good idea of the kind of cloud coverage um, within the, the image. And once we've selected one, we can also add a preview of it into our map um, by clicking the button here. So this is a very low resolution preview, um, as you can see here when it's first added in, that's come out pretty grainy. Um, so it's, it's not the most useful, to be honest, you can see just as much from the, the small image on the right hand side here. But this looks pretty cloud free, um, coming from June, so a nice summertime image. So we have several options now when we want to, to download the images. Um, and they link to the, the tick boxes at the bottom here. So we can either download all of the images in our product list. Um, and if I untick this box here, that's what will happen. So if I click um, run, it will automatically download all of these images. On the other hand, if I've got this ticked, then it will only download the image that I've added into my, my preview over on the left hand side here. Um, we have the option to pre-process the images. So pre-processing carries out a number of different steps. Um, but with the level 2A images, to be honest, most of the necessary pre-processing has already been carried out for us. Um, we may want to create a band set and use band set tools if we're carrying out further processing with the semi-automatic classification plugin. Um, but for now, I'm actually going to untick that to speed things up. And the final option is whether we want to load the bands directly into QGIS. So if you're downloading many images at once, then you might want to skip that so that you can choose which of the bands you want to add in. Um, but I'm just going to download the one image for now. So I'm going to leave the load bands option ticked. And I'm going to leave the option ticked to only download the image that I've got in my my preview in the main map. So I can then hit run and it will ask me where I want to save it. So I'm going to go into my Sentinel folder, uh, data folder. I have a folder for Sentinel images. 
And as soon as I've given it that location, it will start downloading. So these are pretty big files. Um, so obviously exactly how long it takes will depend on the speed of your internet connection, but expect to, to wait a few minutes um, for the images to download. So it will have a separate progress bar for each image band. So it will take a little while. We can see up here the first band is 113 megabytes. Um, but that's just the first of 13 image bands that Sentinel-2 contains. So I'm going to fast forward through this. OK, so that's finished downloading now. So we can close down our semi-automatic classification plugin window. Have a look at what we've got. So what you'll see is that actually each band of the Sentinel-2 image was downloaded separately. So I'm just going to remove this one, which was the preview layer we had before. Um, and we should have 13 bands here. Um, and there you go. You've now downloaded your first Sentinel-2 satellite image ready for analysis. So remember to subscribe and check out my other videos if you want to know what you can do with that data now you've got it.